bookworms. It's been a really long time since I've filmed a video. My last video that I posted was back in July and a lot of you have been reaching out to me on Instagram and on Twitter and asking if I'm going to be filming again and asking if I'm okay and I really appreciate all of the messages that I got. I was kind of vague in answering a lot of them because I honestly really wasn't sure what was going to happen. It's been a crazy year and I know that everyone has had hardships in the year of 2020. That was like a nightmare year. I don't really want to get into the reason that I stopped filming in this video because I don't want my first video back to be like kind of a bummer. I did lose a family member that was close to me and that was really hard so that was like initially why I stopped filming and then there were a whole bunch of other reasons that I just continued to not film but I'm here now and I'm feeling really excited about filming like this was the first time obviously in months but I would say this was the first time in at least over a year if I'm being honest with myself that I like woke up and was really excited to like get ready and film and like I was preparing videos yesterday and stuff and it's just been really nice because I feel like that hadn't been my attitude for a while there in the past. I was kind of like doing things out of habit and doing things out of obligation, but now I'm like feeling excited and enthusiastic again, which is how I felt when I first started my channel. I think that I'm gonna do a much better job of being a booktuber, honestly, because I feel like I have a lot of that enthusiasm back and I really feel like it was missing for a little while there. Anyway, I have so many, so many things to like talk about, so many things to catch up on just because it's been so long. I'm definitely gonna go more into detail in other videos, but I will say that I was really shocked with the way that some of my reading habits seemed to change once I stopped filming. That was probably the most surprising thing to me and also the way that I was acquiring books and letting go of books also changed and as much as I wanted to believe for years that booktube like did not change the way that I read, did not change the way that I hauled things, that clearly just wasn't true. Like however subconsciously it really was influencing me in certain ways and I feel like with my time off I was able to break a lot of bad habits that I kind of got into over the past couple of years. So that's also been really refreshing, but I'm going to get more into my goals for 2021 right now. I'm going to start with reading goals and then I'm also going to mention a couple of lifestyle goals. This isn't really going to be like a lifestyle channel. It's still going to be a book channel, but sometimes I just like including those kinds of things. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I forgot like a really big thing to mention, but you might notice that I actually changed my username. So instead of Super Space Chick, I'm now going by Merrily Kristen. I really wanted something new and fresh and something that felt more me. I created the username Super Space Chick when I was a lot younger, when I was like hardcore really into comics and it just didn't really feel like it fit me anymore. Like I feel like I kind of outgrew it and I really liked the idea of using my actual name in my username, hence Kristen being there. I think some of you guys like might not even have realized that that was my name because I never say my name in videos and you know I always just went by Super Space Chick. So now I'm Merrily Kristen. I really like it. I feel like it really kind of captures my personality. I view the world through a Merrily lens as cheesy as that sounds but I really do feel like that is an accurate depiction of my personality and it just felt right. And also like on top of it the word Mary is often associated with Christmas and I really love Christmas. So it just felt like a good combination. So that is my new name, my new channel name. It's my new Instagram name, my new YouTube name. I know I had a couple of comments saying that people couldn't find me on social media anymore and it's probably just because my name changed. <laughs> so there you go. Now I'll actually get into the resolutions and stuff now that I've addressed that. So it's basically tradition now for me to do the Goodreads reading challenge for the year. I am actually going to be raising my goal this year. So last year my goal was 75 books and I read 100 books. In the past it's usually been an 100 book goal and I've usually like far surpassed that but I definitely struggled with reading a bit last year partially due to Animal Crossing. I played about 
not about. I've played over a thousand hours of Animal Crossing and you might think that I'm like joking and exaggerating that number, but I'm not exaggerating that number. I've played a lot of Animal Crossing, so I really want to kind of refocus and spend a lot more time reading than playing Animal Crossing this year. I mean, I'm still playing Animal Crossing, but you know. So anyway, I'm raising my goal to a hundred books with the intention of reading more than 100 books, there's a chance that I will like revise my goal later on in the year. But if I'm being honest with myself, I'm really aiming to hit about 150. I was actually kind of surprised that I hit 100 books because I did read some very long books last year. So I read two Stormlight Archive books, which are both over a 1000 pages. I read two or three. Can't remember if I read two or three Wheel of Time books. I read two or three Wheel of Time books and those take me like two to three weeks to read because they're just very dense. So like with those reads, I still managed to hit 100, which I feel really good about. And yeah, I'm confident that I'll be able to do it again in 2021. My next goal is that I want to read at least 12 nonfiction books during the year, which equates to pretty much reading one nonfiction book per month. I mentioned on Instagram a whole bunch of times, but I've been really enjoying nonfiction lately. I made a goal for myself last year to read 12 nonfiction books and I thought that it was going to fail miserably because I read one nonfiction book in January and then I did not pick up another nonfiction book until like October, I want to say, but I did end up reading six or seven. So I came really close to hitting the goal. I just kind of read a ton of them like in the latter half of the year. So I really don't think that I'm going to have an issue reading one per month, setting a low goal with the intention of surpassing it. So I'm, I'm actually hoping to read more than that. This is a challenge goal for myself, but I'm setting a goal for myself to buy less books and specifically I'm going to try to buy like 120 books or less throughout the year. 120 is like the maximum that I really want to hit over the year. That averages out to about 10 books per month, but there's a little bit of a caveat there because I also don't want to buy more books in a month than I read during the month. So if I read like eight books, I'm not still going to buy 10 books. I would have a limit of my of like eight books for myself. There obviously might be some exceptions here and there if there's like a month that's very heavy on new releases, but I'm hoping to stick to it for the majority of months. I really want to spend 2021 reducing my physical TBR and kind of curating the collection of books that I currently have. Oh, also you might notice, but I redid my bookshelves. I actually redid them yesterday. One of my goals on this list was reorganize bookshelves. And I was like, you know what? Today seems like a great day to reorganize my bookshelves. And then I can go into my new year of booktube, my new year of reading with a totally new look. And I'm honestly just so happy with it. I think it looks really beautiful. I moved a lot of the books forward on the shelf instead of um, having them pushed back and having things in front of them. So now it's going to be like so easy to just grab books off of my shelf when I want to talk about them. That's going to be a really nice change. I am going to do a reading vlog and I'll show you guys like a full tour of my bookshelf. I'm not going to do the kind of tour where like I pull each book out and tell you the title and author, but I will go shelf by shelf and show you like the new lovely redesign that we've got going here. Goal number four is reread, reread, reread. I feel like 2021 is kind of going to be like my year of rereads and this also kind of started as an unintentional goal because I knew that I really wanted to reread Lord of the Rings this year. It's been a really long time since I've done that. I did reread Fellowship of the Ring maybe two years ago now but I didn't end up continuing with the second two books. So I really want to do that. And then I want to read all of the like supplemental David Day books. If you're aware of those, those have been in my halls for years now. Like every time that a new one is printed, I pick it up. I really like that they go in depth and like explore the world that Tolkien has created. So I think that that's going to be just like a fun kind of project throughout the year. And then I was also thinking that I kind of really want to reread the Akatar series. The next book in the series, the Nesta book, A Chord of Silver Flames, is coming out at the end of February. So I kind of want to make it a priority to reread Akatar, Akamoth, and Akawar. I just think that I'll enjoy it more if I, the new one, I'll enjoy the new one 
one more if I go into it having reread the first three books because it has been a little while and I'm also curious if I will enjoy the third book more if I read them all consecutively. So that will be a little interesting experiment. <laughs> and then while I was thinking about it, I was like, you know what? I've also really wanted to reread Throne of Glass for a long time. This might just be the year of rereading Sarah J Moss for me. And I'm sure that there are some other books that I want to reread as well, but those are like the top ones that come to mind. Goal number five is no more book boxes. <laughs> so I feel like I've kind of been burned with book boxes, especially in this past year. If I'm being honest, the Owl Crate Addie LaRue box was probably like one of the biggest disappointments <laughs> as far as book boxes go. I really only ended up keeping like one item from that box and I even like I didn't even keep the book because it just looked like a hardcover that was missing the dust jacket. I ended up giving it to my future sister-in-law and she thankfully really loved the book. She read it like pretty quickly. So I'm glad I went to someone who enjoyed it and now has it for their collection. But I find that a lot of the book boxes are full of like the same kinds of things over and over again. And I, as you might be able to tell, have like kind of been decluttering a lot. I've also done so much decluttering just in our apartment over the course of the year and it feels really good to let little things go that I'm not using and that I don't really see a ton of value in. So I don't really want to get book boxes anymore because first of all I just hate that you never know if it's gonna include things that you really want or if it's just going to be things that you're like great I want to get rid of all of this and it's just wasteful so no more book boxes I am subscribed to Illumicrate but they do the book only option and even then <laughs> I skipped November December January and now I'm skipping February too I'm really only going to be accepting the books that either have read and loved already or I think that I have a really good chance of loving. Another like way that I kind of got burned is that I ordered the Illumicrate version of A Deadly Education. I ordered the Owlcrate exclusive edition of A Deadly Education and I ended up DNFing A Deadly Education. <laughs> so I was like, well, that was a huge waste of money. So that was really upsetting and I'm going to be much better about resisting pretty books and just like buying what I know I love. I'm kind of finding less value in having like a million copies of a lot of books too. Obviously with some exceptions like Name of the Wind and a lot of the Cassandra Clare Shadowhunter books. But yeah, overall not really going to be doing the whole book box thing. Though I am so excited for the Illumicrate they're doing like archival series now. So like the second series that they're doing is The Infernal Devices. And oh my God, those look beautiful. I will be first in line to order a set of those books. Goal number six is going to be kind of a strange goal. <laughs> and that is not to have any commitments when it comes to reading. So I've kind of realized over the past couple of years that readathons and buddy reads like really just don't seem to work for me. They're are some times where there's like a serendipitous occasion where me and a friend happen to be reading a book at the same time and it works out really well but if I ever plan it in advance it just doesn't happen like I just don't do it I don't read the book I'm the worst buddy reader ever I like have been saying that for a while but I'm always so flattered when people ask to buddy read things with me but I'm also like I'm just going to disappoint you and then I feel guilty about it so I'm really trying not to do like any buddy reads or any readathons if it happens it happens but it's not something that I'm like seeking out I've kind of become like an extreme mood reader over the past couple of years I honestly believe it's because I've wanted to feel like I have some semblance of control over my reading life and that might sound like a really strange sentence to someone who doesn't have a booktube channel, but it probably makes total sense to someone who does have a booktube channel. Number seven is to maintain my bookish bullet journal. I spent so much time setting up my 2021 spreads. I'm really pleased with them. I'm really excited to fill it out throughout the year and I think it's just been like a fun creative thing to do like in my free time is I really like bullet journaling. I've been doing bullet journals for years now though I haven't always been the most consistent with them but 2019 was probably 
probably my best bullet journaling year. Like I filled it out for the entire year and everything was great. And I want to do that again this year. So that is the goal. I can show you guys a flip through of my bullet journal if you are curious about it, though I know that there are like a ton of bullet journal videos out there now. Number eight is to read Little Women. Every year I have the intention of reading more classic books and it usually just does not happen. I end up reading like one to three classic books per year and that's about it. Last year I read one, I read The Secret Garden, and I am not going to continue setting a goal for myself that I just don't complete because it's disheartening. So instead I'm setting the goal of reading Little Women, just the one classic. If I read more, that's awesome. If I read less, that's not less because <laughs> I only want to read this book. If I read only Little Women, that's great too. Little Women was actually the first movie that I saw at the beginning of 2020 and I really loved the Greta Gertwig version. I thought it was like beautiful and it really made me want to read the book because I never read it. Definitely excited to dive into that one. And then my last reading goal and or booktube goal I guess and most important of all is to just have fun, which sounds like a silly goal, but I'm really going to try not to let any of the pressure that I felt previously get to me this time around. I think that by taking the time off that I did, I was able to break some of my bad habits and I really think that I'm going to go about things differently this time around. I'm not going to put as much pressure on myself. I'm going to have fun with it and I'm really Again, I'm just really excited to be back. I'm really excited to be excited to read and excited to film and excited to talk to people. So I want to maintain that attitude. I actually went back and watched all of my reading goal videos since I started booktube, which, whew, that was an experience. <laughs> but I really am, I feel like I'm coming into 2021 with the energy of I think it was 2018, Kristen, and that's like the vibe that I'm feeling for 2021. So yeah. <laughs> All right, and then a couple of lifestyle goals that I'm gonna like speed through pretty quickly because this video is already lengthier than I was expecting, but it's the first time that I'm back in half a year, so I just feel like I have so much to say. So sorry about that. So number one is to blog regularly. I got an amazing redesign on my blog. I am absolutely obsessed with it. My blog is now www.merrilykristen.com, so it's no longer Super Space Chick. I just am obsessed with it. I think it's beautiful and it just feels so much more me and it's more like minimalistic and streamlined and I just love it so much. Like I've been having a, a lot of fun. I don't know why, but I'm, I find that I really like making like collages and stuff in Photoshop. So that has been a blast for me to do. I look forward to getting up early so that I can go on my computer and like Photoshop images <laughs> together, which is probably not normal, but I just have been loving it. My blog is going to be more like lifestyle content and booktube is going to be obviously be books. I will do some bookish stuff on my blog as well. I'm even toying with the idea of having some supplemental posts. So if I do like a favorites of the year or something, I'll also post it on my blog so that you can kind of easily reference it if you have a question about a book that I might have mentioned. We'll see how that goes. I also just want to mention that my blog redesign was done by 801 Red, who is the best. Like, I have been using Chris to do my website for, hmm, is seven, eight, nine years? I don't even remember. It's been a really long time, but he's amazing. He's so easy to work with, even when I'm being like the biggest pain in the butt in the world about certain design elements that I want. He's like, yeah, we could do that. Yeah, we could do that. And I'm just so thankful for him and for all of the work that he put into my site because oh, I'm so happy with it. Lifestyle goal number two is a really boring adult goal, but it's to save more money. And this is pretty much tying into the goal of buying less books and buying less clothes. This is the first year that Andrew and I are going to be like very aggressively saving money to hopefully buy a house in the, in the future. I feel really good about it this year. Like I'm very excited to start aggressively saving, which sounds so boring. And it's funny because it's going to be really difficult for me 
but Andrew's just going to proceed as normal. Nothing's changing for him. He just has to hope that I stop shopping. <laughs> Number three is to plan a trip with Andrew once it is safe to do so. I have to say, last year, Andrew and I had been planning to go to London, Paris, and Scotland at the end of March, and we were waiting until the last minute to book everything because we had gotten, like, not great news about my mom's health, and everything was just kind of up in the air. Like, I didn't know if I would be able to go, if I would need to be closer to home, just like in case of anything. So I kept like putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And then, then there was a pandemic and I could not even imagine what would have happened if we would have taken that trip and then gotten stuck in Europe for who knows how long, like that would have been a nightmare. But I kind of want to do some more local trips. Like I've always wanted to go to Nantucket. So that is definitely like kind of top of my list. And then in fall, I've always wanted to go to Salem. And I've also really wanted to go to Boston. I've never been there. And we went to Providence a couple of years ago for my cousin's wedding. And it was so beautiful. So I would not mind going back there either. But again, that is not until it is safe to do so until the world's in a better place until we're both vaccinated and you know all of that. Another kind of challenge that I have for myself is I want to create a recipe book this year. So I purchased this really cute binder. It's like a recipe binder from the Illustrated Life. I also purchased the tabs that you can put inside of it so you can like break recipes down by category. I spent a lot of last year cooking my mom's recipes and cooking with her and taking notes while we were doing things. So now I just really have to type all of those recipes up and then I kind of want to make some of them again and take better photos of the finished product and then I'll use those to put into my new recipe binder. I also want to go for a walk at least once a week in Central Park with Andrew. In 2019, we had gone for a walk almost every single day of the year and then in 2020, it was very scary because at the beginning of everything, New York was really like the epicenter of the pandemic and we were too afraid to leave our apartment for like anything, even for walks. So 2020, we got super lazy, definitely spent way too much time inside. You know, living in a New York City apartment is not a way that you can kind of like get exercise walking around or something. Like I've never been so jealous of people that have backyards. I literally would just walk back and forth in a backyard or like sit in a backyard to just see the outdoors. That would be so great. Now that there's more knowledge and it seems like it's safer to be outside, I do want to get back into the habit of going on weekly walks. And we actually went for our first one yesterday and it was lovely and I'm really excited to like get back into it. I also want to learn how to do makeup. <laughs> that is just a skill that I like never acquired. I literally have no idea what I'm doing. I have products that I've been using for a long time and I just, you know, I do my best, <laughs> but I'm not good at makeup and I really want to learn how to be. So if you have any recommendations of YouTubers that have beauty channels, please let me know because there is such an overwhelming amount of beauty content on YouTube. Like I have searched for things that I've been curious about and I just, I don't even know where to start. And there's so much that comes up and I don't know if they're like, if something is going to be a good video to watch. So if anyone has a like trusted recommendation, I would really appreciate that. I'm looking for more natural type of makeup, not like crazy, crazy looks, but I would like to learn how to do some fun stuff with eyeshadow too, but more like, you know, the everyday kind of person makeup looks. <laughs> and then super quick, three fun media goals are finish our Marvel rewatch. We started rewatching all of the Marvel movies in 2020. We are currently up to Doctor Strange and I want to finish that watch through. Oh, also so excited for WandaVision. I cannot believe how soon that is coming. Number two, watch all of the Studio Ghibli films. I'm really excited that they're all on HBO Max and I've been wanting to marathon all those. So once we're done with Marvel, I think we're going to move on to Studio Ghibli. And then number three is 2020 was kind of like the year of Star Trek. We binged all of Star Trek The Next Generation and loved it. I'm losing my voice because I'm not used to talking this much anymore. Now we're going back and we are watching Star Trek The Original Series, which so cringy, so campy. It's an experience, but it's fun to see where the roots 
came from, like for Next Generation. I really love Next Generation. I am not really caring for the original series very much, but it's it's something that we're doing. <laughs> and then once we finish, we're going to jump into like Voyager and Deep Space Nine and Picard and Discovery and like all of the, Star I think Enterprise, all of the Star Trek shows that are out there. That is my very long-winded list of goals for 2021, and I really am very excited to be back. Thank you guys for sticking with me and for understanding, hopefully, <laughs> um, why I took such a long hiatus. I really needed it. It really it was really good for me. I'm excited to talk about books again and I'm having trouble ending the video, which I definitely struggled with before, but now is amplified by the fact that I'm rusty at this. So that is all that I have for this video. I will see you guys soon in a new one. Bye!